Welcome to FNF Victory Road Team Analysis. In this series, I'm going over different teams of the FNF Victory Road Draft League, and we are now on the playoff teams. So the six finalists who did very well in the regular season and moved on to the playoffs. And I am moving on to Whooper Blooper, being headed by Lion Hugs, and I have Lion Hugs on the call with me to discuss their team today. And speaking of their team, here's a really nice group photo that Lion Hugs made of Team Whooper Blooper. <laughs> so if you want to just introduce the members by their names, I think you gave them all names. And we have the, the group photo displayed now. Oh, okay, perfect. So, I mean, I guess I'll just start from like left to right and everything, um, which is actually odd because like my left hand side of the team is usually the people I haven't really used as much, or I mean, a few of them are. So I'll start off with Nagito Komaeda, um, the Pachirisu, <laughs> um, and then we have, or do I explain like the reasoning behind, or like um, for the name, if if you want to, we're gonna talk more about the Pokemon later, so you can just oh, introduce okay. them. So I can just name them. Yeah. All right. Okay, perfect, because like, I refer to them by their names more often than I do their actual Pokemon names. Anyway, so Nagito is Pachirisu, General Grievous is Metagross, Alphonse Elric is Type Null, then we have Chad Deluxe, the Chandelure, we have Bernie Sanders, the Walrein, Lapis Lazuli, the Mega Gyarados, and then on the right-hand side we have um, Himbofication, the Dragonite, we have Bait, the Toxicroak, Trans Rites, the Sylveon, um... We have Perfuma, the Superior. We have Discourse, the Skun Tank. And then lastly, but not least, we have uh, Dr. Chunch, the... I was about to say Whooper. Dr. Chunch, the Quagsire. Sometimes named Oily Josh. And sometimes named uh, Sapphire. <laughs> like, I changed I changed their name a lot because I couldn't decide on something that properly fit. Um, but then once I got Mega Gyarados, I was like, okay, you can be the Steven Universe reference. And you can be something else. I like that Marlon's feet are covered. That's my favorite part of this whole <laughs> thing. It's like, cover the feet. <laughs> Honestly, same. <laughs> Absolutely the same. I was trying to find a good like body shot or whatever, and then I think this one's from the Pokemon Masters mobile game. Oh. Um, huh. Yeah, that's why it's like cell shaded. Um, yeah, animation. I was wondering what this is from. But, but very nice photo we got here of the, of the crew. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll discuss more of the Pokemon in length later. But first, we'll actually go over your initial team and some of the thoughts uh, drafting your initial team. Some of the team uh, you did change, but we're just going to talk about initially what, what, what was going through your mind when you drafted this team. Alright, so I think I should start out a disclaimer now, just because like, a lot of the reasonings that I do almost anything, like most of the decisions are like kind of partly influenced just by like impulsivity and like ADHD basically like uh, as in like I actually have ADHD um so when it came to like the overall I guess philosophy of picking my team um especially in the onset it was literally just like okay which one is like my favorite which one do I have like emotional kind of connections to um or which one's what I think would be funny kind of a thing um so like make a hair across like at the time when we started this league uh, you and I, mostly you actually, <laughs> were in the middle of like a Bug Fables uh, playthrough mm -hmm. um, on the Switch. So I thought like, okay, make it hair across would be like a perfect little reference to like Kabu, um, who we both love from that game. <laughs> um, and then the rest are pretty much like Pokemon that I've used like in the mainline games when I first played those gens. So like Superior from like Black and White and Black and White 2, uh, Sylveon from Pokemon X. Metagross, I don't think I ever got a chance to play in the mainline games, but I just love the design, and then I thought it would be funny to reference him as uh, General Grievous, just because Metagross kind of looks like that Star Wars character. Um, Chandelure is another Gen 5 favorite, Audino is a Gen 5 favorite, Sneasel from Gen 2, Dragonite from Gen 2, Ralgator as well, Quagsire. <laughs> um, a lot of Gen 2 representation now that I think about it, at least on the onset. Um... So kind of and like a team of your faves? Pretty much. Most of them from Gen 5 and 2, I think, from here. Like, I 
like I think the phrase at the beginning of this draft league was called sniping. Like if somebody like takes like the Pokemon you were gunning for or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, is that appropriate? Okay. Yeah. So like initially, I also wanted Galviantula and um, Bisharp, Bisharp, as well as Braviary. But there was literally a team called the Merc and Braviary, so I would never, I wouldn't take, you know, a mascot's uh, a team's mascot. So I was like, okay, fine, that'll go. And then I lost out on Galvantula and Bishar, but I mean, that's fine. Like, I, the great thing about like relying on my favorites is that like I have a huge list of <laughs> favorites to fall back on. Yeah, that's true. And and Which it did end up working. Me. Oh, just to interrupt real quickly, that also kind of decided why I chose like Quagsire and Pachirisu as well, just because you know, like if there was a way I could have made Wooper Quack a viable, I definitely would have gone with Wooper instead of Quagsire. <laughs> and then Pachirisu, like everybody knows, like it's like like the infamous like Worlds uh, tournament or whatever, where like Pachirisu like just like owns um, in that like final match or whatever. But like, I've <laughs> um, yeah, like I actually. Not to say like oh I, like I love Patrice first because anybody could have loved any of these Pokemon, but like I had that connection with Patrice for a while, so like like that's what decided it. Not necessarily like like going back to Superior real quick before I move on. Like I know apparently like I learned after the fact that like supposedly con contrary Superior is like a very like viable strategy or whatever. <laughs> um, I didn't know that. It was just literally like oh Superior is like a cute little snake. I liked the Smug Leaf leak when Gen 5 first came out, or before it came out, people were like, oh, what's this Pokemon called? Um, I just like the jokes and, like, the design. So if it didn't have that ability that, like, makes it, like, god tier, I still would have, like, gone after Superior just because of that factor. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's good, though, because using your favorites, especially from the game, it's like that, that philosophy of, like, believe in your, believe in your children. <laughs> like, believe in your favorite Pokemon. <laughs> so... It worked out for you, especially considering, and we'll move on now to the next slide, um, considering the battle record you had, which was overall pretty good, enough to get you into the playoffs. So let's uh, let's go general first, and then we'll go into each one of these battles individually. Overall, how do you think you did in the league, your performance? I... I think I did pretty well. Like I think if you look at, I mean, even if you look at the battle record right there, there's kind of like an even spread of like wins and losses. Um, of course, one of those wins was because of a dropout, I believe. Like that's like this, the highlighted one. Um, but like in general, like I did way better than I expected. Because like, here's the thing. So like, obviously, like the server FNF and everything, it's like Smash focused or whatever. So like, I'm still very amateur, and like I don't play that often. So like. My Bowser's still kind of like in a certain plateau that I need to push out of. Um, and I'm still learning the fundamentals, so like I was kind of like bringing that like expectation into this. So I expect it to be like destroyed and creamed and all that. Because like, oh, like, like you especially, like we've done friendlies like in years past or whatever, but like I know that you're pretty competitive and you know the meta and all that. So I was expecting like a whole bracket of like noels basically yeah. <laughs> to have to face um so i was like really intimidated at the, at the beginning so like my noels. first win <laughs> so like my first win kind of helps me like a little like realize like okay like i'm not as like disadvantaged as i thought i would be um so i just like the fact that kind of exceeded my expectations like i never actually expected to get into the playoffs i just hope i i could have mm -hmm. and then i did well, looking at the record, when you won, you won. Like, <laughs> plus five, plus five, plus six, plus six. That's pretty impressive. Um, were there any people that you were very excited to face? Any teams that you were very nervous to face? Yeah, so, <laughs> speaking of, I'm sure you can understand from that comment, like, oh, I was really scared of facing an entire league of Noels. Obviously you. Um, I kind of expected you to be a very great challenge just because of like the friendlies matches we've done over the years like I'm like okay I know you're a tough cookie <laughs> and um, also noob scrub so like um, here's the thing like I've been playing this game since like gen 1 I'm talking about like red blue yellow version or whatever like with all those like really broken abusive mechanics like rap and um, was it like sleep powder and some other stuff or whatever so like 
I got used to, I guess, a strategy which people call, like, stall or whatever. <laughs> and, like, I heard that, like, Noob Scrub was, like, stall master, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so I was, like, really scared um, of facing Noob Scrub. And, like, here, like, in the record, you'll see I got a 6-0. But, like, if you look at the actual, like, what happens in that match, that was so extremely close. Like, one false move and, like, that wouldn't have been a 6 so That might have been, like, a 3-0 or could have been, like, a... Like, in the reverse, like, Noob Scrub could, could have easily won, I think, well... Just because th there's some other stuff we'll get into, like that yeah. in that match. Um, so you, Noob Scrub, and I have it written down here. Yeah, Quest requested <laughs> also, um, which who I ended up facing off in the playoffs or whatever. But just like the team that they had, like was already very intimidating, um, and then having to actually face it, like in practice, like basically four times. That was just. <laughs> That was just so tough, and it's it's not just the Pokemon that are tough. It's like the thought process behind the move set and how he like reads. Like, like I've gotten used to like how you read, and like you do that the sort of like the specific way that you read is like sometimes like you kind of like read like two or three steps in advance. So then I have to think four steps in advance, which you'd think that would over prepare you for everything, but it doesn't. It prepares you for a specific style of reading, and like, um. I want to say with like Dutch, uh, Dutch Inke is a quest requested. Like it's like a different style of reading that like I just I'm not used to because like with you at least I have that experience of like okay I've done friendlies before I kind of have a general vague idea of like how Noel plays versus like quest requested which was like I don't know like the plays that I was getting hit with I'm like I couldn't properly always anticipate it um, which you see a lot in like our actual final final match like in mm -hmm. the in the playoffs but we'll get to that later. But yeah, those, like, I'm not saying that anybody else that I lost against or whatever wasn't, like, good, obviously, at all. Like, it's not to detract from their wins. It was just that these three in particular, like, were just, like, very intimidating, like, going in. That's interesting, and we'll definitely get into those individual matches. Actually, we'll, we'll move forward and start going into the specific ones. So we'll start with week one, which was versus Butcher Blissies. Um, overall... In this match, I think this was a pretty straightforward match um, mm -hmm. in terms of of fingered witches fighting style being pretty. Uh, it, it's not stally; it's very direct. And mm -hmm. your fighting style, I think you went more for like stealth rocks, defensive play, and things like that, and then were able to chip holes via that. Mm -hmm. um, so this was a pretty strong start for you. Yeah, it's funny how, like, because I, I reviewed, like, the records before we did this interview, um, and, like, here's the thing, like, that was, like, my first match, so, like, I had all those, like, preconceived notions of, like, how it would go, so I was, like, really nervous on top of the fact that this was, like, a friend, um, like, a mutual friend of ours, uh, Butcher Blissies, so I was, like, I didn't want, like, I didn't want to do bad, but I didn't want to beat them either, because, like, I wanted them to, like, keep going forward, and, like, I didn't quite understand the rules of, like, the of like the league and like how it worked because this is literally like this is like my first competitive league like ever um so like i thought like oh no like if i beat them then they can't advance and like then they're done and then like luckily i found out like after the fact that like that wasn't the case um, yeah round but, robin. so i'm sorry yeah the round robin so like that was nice um and like Again, I was expecting a league of like Noel, so I fully expected uh, Joey to like over prepare. Um, <laughs> so I was trying to over over prepare in response, and I think I actually asked you for like a lot. Of, I asked you a lot for a lot of help, like for most of the tourney, actually. Like whenever I got the chance, um, I remember this one? You gave me some good advice, which is like, okay, so like they're gonna have a ditto. Um, so as long as you have like Pokemon on your team that can you know counter anybody else on your team just in case that Ditto comes out, you should be in a safe spot. Um, and I'm glad I took that advice to heart because like if you've noticed on my team, like I have like the Dragon Fairy Steel Core, but then I also have I think it's like Fire, Water, and Grass. Yeah, Fire, Water, Grass. So I had everybody to kind of like counter each other just in case I lost one. Um, and I think even some of my other Pokemon had the coverage moves too to like counter counter. Just mm -hmm. in case I lost multiple um, in that chain. Yeah, that's really good. That's really good advice. I think that is like one of the best advice to 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 have versus a team that has Ditto on it. Even if Ditto doesn't come, 
or if it does, like you'll be prepared. And those are good cores anyways, so mm-hmm. so pretty pretty strong first match. And we're gonna move into the second match versus the Great Tacticians. Um, and in this one So you began strong and Dragonite mm-hmm. was poised to to go for it. But Yeah, I remember this one. Yeah. Um, it was pretty rough. Yeah, um, the switch away from Florgas, I think, was what really dictated. Factor. Yeah, it dictated the rest of the match, especially because Florgas then became a thorn in your side, being a really good defensive switch in, and you weren't able to take it down with Dragonite. Exactly, yeah. I literally have it written down in my notes here. So, with like Joey, it's like I did end up, I'm sorry, with Butcher Blissies, I ended up sweeping and everything, more or less. Um,. But, like, with that win, it's, like, there's only so much you could really reflect from that. Um, like, going forward, and, like, so, like, the nervousness from, like, the first match still came into the second match. Just because, like, I wasn't really quite into my groove just yet. And I was very intimidated by Toxic. I believe that's why I switched out Dragon Dance, uh, Dragon Knight. Because, yeah, like, again, like, I was still getting, like, my feet wet and trying to understand how to, like, how this, like, whole competition works. And I was just really afraid of like that toxic damage racking up, because um, I was planning to Dragon Dance twice just to be 100% safe. And since I didn't get that chance, I was so intimidated that I instead of finishing off uh, Forges, uh, I have Lind- Lindus. I think that's what Kuro uh, called um, Forges. But anyway, so, so instead of finishing that off, like you're right, it, like they were a thorn in my side. And then also like, um, like. Th- when I mentioned like ADHD, like for this video, it's like kind of like a double-edged sword because like there's the negative part, but there's also the positive part. The positive parts come out later, which is like the kind of like intense focus that like once it starts going, it, I just I just go as hard as I can with it. Um, and then there's other times where it's there's the actual downside where it's like I'll forget a very basic fundamental fact about a Pokemon. Sometimes like even as that fact is demonstrated to me, like literally the next turn I will forget something that happened. So. Um, Magic Balance Absol, or sorry, Mega Magic Balance Mega Absol that uh, really intimidated me once. I think it was Stealth Rock was bounced back at me, or Toxic, it was one of the two. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, but luckily, I think, or no, yeah, luckily, um, after losing this match, I feel like it gave me a lot more to reflect on, and like, it started making me think of, like, okay, what is, like, what actually does make a team? Like, what's, like, yeah what makes the, um, the team like cohesive and like function well like together because this time i really wanted to just debut mega heracross because like i never used it before i'm not really familiar with the mega pokemon that well mm-hmm. um and i just wanted to you know debut kabu just because kabu is cute and reliable um but then it made me realize like wait a minute mega heracross doesn't really fit so well with my team um and then it made me start rethinking like which pokemon i do need to have on my team because i think yeah. this match i had I think Dragonite actually had Defog at one point, um, which, like, just because, you know, dra- like it's a useful move, but, like, not on Dragonite, I feel. Yeah, um, I agree. So it made me realize I need a better, like, Rapid Spinner or a Defogger just to get rid of Stealth Rock in case it get- happens to me. Yeah, and you, so you debuted Mega Kabu, uh, Kabu, the Mega Heracross, and then we move into, actually, the, the that was the last time, because now we move into the exchanges, um, and sometimes you have to lose one to see what you could do to improve. So I think mm-hmm. this was your your improvement to your team. And so you went from for alligator to skuntank. So briefly mention why why skuntank. Right. Well, I mean, I kind of covered a little bit of that reason just now. Um, skuntank actually does have access to defog and. While its name suggests it's kind of a tank, it really kind of isn't, but it still has that utility of, like, for example, like taking Toxics, which comes in really importantly later on in my matchups. Um, it's also, I, need, I also needed, like, a Dark Pokemon at the time. Um, I think I did eventually get Mega Gyarados, like, I think th- that same week. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to have multiple just in case, like, I brought, like, I wanted to bring Dragonite for, like, a reason set of Mega Gyarados, so I wanted that extra backup. Um,. And just, I mean, look, I mean, look at it. It's, it's, it's kind of like, I, 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 I consider Skuntank kind of a baby. It's not quite like stereotypical, like baby, um, but it's still really cute. And like, I still felt like it fit in my team. 
with the whole like I guess like the whole like whooper blooper aesthetic, just the whole like whimsical, silly kind of aspect to it. Well, I, I do think Skuntank was one of your better exchanges for sure. Um, and then you also mentioned Me- Mega Gyarados, which we're moving on to next. Mega Heracross for Mega Gyarados. Um, why the Mega Gyarados? Let's see. I think I realized um, that Quagsire, while it functions very well in the roles that it can do, um, it I didn't feel like it was properly like a water Pokemon in the way that I was trying to use it. And like moving forward, like thinking of like, hmm, like I, I want somebody who can hit heavily. I'm not saying that Quagsire is weak at all. Like it has a strong, it can it can use Waterfall pretty strongly and Earthquake, of course, like a, like decently. But um, I noticed that the move set I was gonna have and like most likely was gonna keep having was gonna be St- Scald, Toxic Recover, and Earthquake like nine times out of ten. Yeah. Um, and I realized that Scald wasn't really gonna do me much. So like if I had to counter like a Fire Pokemon, uh, for example, like. I didn't feel like Quagsire was the best one for that. Not all the time, because um, Earthquake, you know, can cut and cover that. But um, you know, just like the viability of Water as an aggressive move. So I figured Mega Gyarados can kind of back that up, and like I felt like it worked syner- like in a really good way. I was gonna say synergistically. Oh my God, who am I, Pete Buttigieg? <laughs> um, Mega Gyarados. I felt like it kind of complements. Um, Dragonite, there we go. Uh, Dragonite, just because like they kind of f- fulfill similar roles in terms of like, oh, this is like a Dragon Dance uh, sweeper kind of uh, Pokemon, mm-hmm. and there might be some cases where like a Gyarados would be more viable than um, Dragonite, for example. Yeah, that's true. I think this was another good trade, and then the last one, Sneasel to type Null. This one, I think, like it was a good trade, but I think it was probably the least useful of your three trades. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can say that without a doubt. I believe this trade comes from Appleton Allegiance, from Colin, maybe? No, uh, sorry, it was a transaction. Oh. They were all transactions, these three. Oh, these three were all transactions? Yeah. Oh, because they traded on Dino, that's what it was. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, with Type Null, I'm honestly having trouble trying to recall exactly what role I wanted. Um, I think it was more of the case of I wanted to get rid of Sneasel just because I realized like, Sneasel is super, super frail. Yeah. And like even with Eviola, it's like, what's the point <laughs> of doubling yeah. a very weak defense? Um, which is unfortunate because like, Sneasel is really cute and I wanted to use it, but I couldn't justify it. Versus Type Null, which was, oh, so the desire I want, like, sorry, the role I wanted to fulfill was I, w- I kind of wanted access to like a Mew-like Pokemon uh, that's not a dig against you or whatever. We, we talked about this before. I was fine with you uh, getting Mew, so, like, that's chill, but I still wanted, like, a Pokemon that had, like, you know, like, kind of, like, stats all the way down the line, like, close to 100 if possible, and, like, Type Null was pretty much right there, other than speed. Um, so combine that with Eviolite, and then I figured, okay, this is, like, my defensive wall if I need it. This is my specially defensive wall if I need it. Um, so I figured he'd be able to, like, maybe not excel in terms of, like, you know, taking out other Pokemon, but I figured he could, like, function as a wall in cases where, like, maybe, like, Quacksire couldn't take a hit, like, with Grass Knot, for example, which right. that killed me so many times <laughs> during this uh, league. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, th- those were all three good exchanges, I think, for you. And moving forward, you got to use them, so let's look at... Um, the match is coming up. You have um, versus Appleton Allegiance. And in this one... Um, in this one, I think Megalopony really psyched you out. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so I remember this one was one that was also maybe... That also really made me nervous. Um, I believe because at, I believe at this point, uh, Colin already helped me. Um, prepare for, cer- for certain matches, or if not, I at least heard of like <laughs> Colin's reputation and everything. Um, so I was really intimidated, especially by the Megalop. I mean, once I started looking at the stats, I'm like, oh, that's terrifying. And I actually remember having a conversation with you saying that like a certain nature Gyarados might be able to outspeed it with a Dragon Dance or something. Yeah. Um, which would guarantee that you could like two hit KO it or one hit KO it or something to that effect. 
Um, so the thing is, I remember we we were having the conversation, or whatever. So here, here's where the whole AHD double sword comes in, um, where it's like I remember the conversation. So we had it. We had like I adjusted the stats of my Gyarados, and it was all set up. But when it came to the day of for the match. I didn't remember that my Gyarados could outspeed it. I remembered, oh my god, Megalopony is a terror, and it's if I don't outspeed it, then I'm screwed. So, I that's what I remembered. So even though I had Dragon Dance boosted Mega Gyarados, I didn't capitalize on it and take up Megalopony when I had the chance. Hmm. And that kind of just messed me up for the rest of the match. Yeah, I'm curious to see what would have happened if you did take it out on on the first chance you got. But <laughs> still, still an interesting and decent match despite that. Um, and, um, yeah, that, that was versus Colin versus Rio Grande Rapidash. Um, this one was a plus five win for you, and you actually managed to use Dragonite really well. Um, I think that just like you didn't realize the outspeeding in this match, I think that Ember didn't realize that Landorus outsped Dragonite because it was scarfed. So, oh. Dragonite kind of went on a rampage until Landorus came in to Stone Edge it, but by that point it was a little too late. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, I think this is the match also where, like, I really, like, kind of try to focus on, like, some of, like, my hindrances, which was, like, for, like forgetting basic things about a Pokemon or, like, just not knowing enough about, the, about my, my um, opponent's team. Like last match, for example, like for week three, I actually didn't know what Tail Glow was, and I think that also like kind of like for Manaphy, like kind of helps. Hmm. That also contributed to my loss last time. Mm -hmm. So this time around, I was like, I was like in the zone, like I kind of, like, I guess like hyper focused, and I was like, okay, let me be conservative with how I'm using my Pokemon. Let me not be afraid of switching. Let me try to like really think through like how to like keep my Pokemon alive. Um, <laughs> I, to the point where, like, I think um, Emperor Hoof uh, commented, oh, like, oh, like, another heal bell or so something to that effect. Because um, I kept healing my Pokemon, like, whenever they got, like, burns or Toxic, or I think it was Toxic as well. Toxic. Um, and this, this was also, like, the debut match for Skuntank, and I believe that. I believe it took those. I don't know if. It, I don't remember if it took the Toxics in this one or not, but, like, I just remember feeling confident. Like with my matchup, um, with the team that I brought, yeah, and of course with Dragon, I finally getting to set up and just start punching things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, oh, and just one last thing about this match or whatever. Like, I ever, like this is also the first time I ever paid attention to the chat because like I always forget that you can talk in it. Um, so like I think at one point like I thought like Amber might have disconnected or something. Um, so I got confused, but I mean. It's still, I think, I think it was still a pretty good match, and like I feel like it just, again, like I feel like this is like the first demonstration of like okay, I can reflect and like learn and like think and like strategize from like there on forward. Yeah, and I think in the beginning, especially, you were taking your time to find an opening, and then you got that opening for Dragonite. So, so a good lesson moving forward. And moving forward, actually, this is when you exchanged Audino for Walrein with Colin. You made that trade. Um, so why did you pick up Walrein? Okay, so honestly, um, it was literally just that, um, yeah, this was Colin, right? I traded yeah. with Colin, yeah. This was literally just the fact that, like, they asked me. So, like, on, like, for most cases, I would probably have been willing to trade Pokemon other than, like, certain Pokemon I considered, like, my core. Like, I wouldn't have traded Quagsire for anything just because of the mascot aspect. And they specifically asked for Audino. And the thing is, like, for all those weeks leading up um, to the Noob Scrub match, that, like, I realized that anytime I wanted to even consider bringing Audino, Sylvan was always a better option. I believe it has, like, more HP and more special attack and all that. So I figured, you know, like, I can do without Audino. And, like, Colin really needed, like, a healer of some sort, like, I think a Wish Passer or something like that. So I was like, okay, fine, like, just show me, like, a Pokemon that's, like, viable. <laughs> and they gave me, like, three options. I think it was Voltorb, Walrein, and I don't remember the last option, but <laughs> I was like, there's no way I'm picking Voltorb, I'm sorry. They're, they're cutie, but I can't. Um, no, and I then... I refuse. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. 
Um, and then, just a lot of thing, like, just the aesthetic of Wall Rain, it just reminds me a lot of Bernie Sanders, and, like, um, obviously this, this whole league is happening during the primary, which still isn't over yet. Um, but, like, at the time I was, like, really following Bernie's campaign pretty closely, how he's being treated in the media and all that kind of stuff, so I figured, you know, like, let me show <laughs> some, like, minor support, I guess, uh, through, um, you know, naming Walrein Bernie Sanders and keeping him on my team, and then when I saw his moveset, too, it, it wasn't, like, the perfect Water and Ice Pokemon, but it was still, like, you know, still good and functional, it had access to, like, uh, Super Fang, for example, which I really liked. Um, especially because, like, with Pachirisu, I, uh, that's what, that was my plan to use Pachirisu Super Fang to, like, t like you know, weaken a really powerful Pokemon. But Pachirisu doesn't have as much bulk as, like, Walrein does and doesn't have access to Ice Beam. So I figured, okay, well, Walrein can, like, function in certain capacities where Pachirisu couldn't and vice versa. Right. And Walrein, uh, this isn't the only Bernie Sanders in the league either, which I find hilarious. Um... <laughs> So yeah, I think this was also a good trade. Um, even though Walrein wasn't used that much, but it was used in the playoffs to, to some extent, so we'll see Walrein later. Um, mm -hmm. And then moving forward, you're versus the American Braviaries. And this was actually a 6-0, although you mentioned earlier that it wasn't as close as the score makes it seem. But you did have two, mm -hmm. two really stellar Pokemon in this matchup. I think Toxicroak especially... Mm -hmm. um, because it had dry skin, which let it switch in on Empoleon for free, set up substitute, and then go for it. Yeah, that was just that was. I got. I also want to say for this match, like RNG really favored me that match. Like I don't know what it was. I heard that. I later found out that like Noob Scrub had like a history with RNG during the sleep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So sorry about that new scrub, um, but it, it, again, it, 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 I, I have to admit that that was a factor. Like I got certain critical hits, some of my moves uh, with like lower accuracy hit, what, whereas Noob Scrubs missed and like things like that. I believe like Zen Headbutt, for example, from yeah, Zen Headbutt. Um So luck was really on my side. Um, but this is also like another match where I feel like I was also like in that like zone, like in spite of. Um, I guess my nervousness, because I think I mentioned to you before, like, Noob Scrub was, like, someone I was like, oh, my god, I had to fight Noob Scrub, oh, my god. <laughs> um, so, like, I feel like e this match, again, shows that whole, like, learning from mistakes and, like, focusing and, really, really honing in on, like, uh, keeping my Pokemon alive. I, I believe this one was also kind of, like, a stall match, but, I mean, that kind of makes sense, because, like, that's kind of Noob Scrub's style. Yeah. Um, and what was it? I have it written down that Chad uh, Deluxe uh, Chandelure had a critical hit somewhere. I think it was either Shadow Ball or Flamethrower. It was versus Empoleon. Okay, it was versus Empoleon. Without that critical hit, I don't think I would have been able to take it out. Um, and with Toxicroak, um, I just want to briefly mention, I named Toxicroak Bait after like um, this Netflix series I was watching called like, The Dragon Prince, and like it has like this little glow toad that looks really cute, and like their name is... Um, uh, bait basically like 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 fish bait or something mm. um so yeah i just wanted to kind of make that reference i don't know if anybody <laughs> got it really <laughs> but anyway um well bait did really well in this matchup i think that yeah was, like this was, was like their debut match or whatever yeah. um and i feel like it was like a little bit more like bait shined a little bit more than like discourse uh the gun tank did when yeah. on their debut match just because of you know uh i i feel like that substitute really really helped yeah uh, take definitely. some of those like i I don't think it was Toxic, but I know there were certain moves that like would have really threatened um, Toxic Grove other than just that headbutt. I don't remember what it was. Yeah, definitely, I agree. <clears throat> um, Bait did really well in that match. And uh, the next match is actually versus Mystical Chain versus me. <laughs> so, um, versus, from my perspective, which also shows a little bit in the in the differentials. Dragonite and Chandelure were like the two Pokemon I needed to take down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and then once I took them down, I was like, okay. So what were you thinking? Were you thinking Dragonite and Chandelure were the two Pokemon that you needed to keep alive? <laughs> <laughs> um, what I knew for sure 
was that I needed Stealth Rock up to like intimidate like Volcarona, I believe, and I need to get rid of Talk. Um, sorry, my Lopsic as soon as possible, <laughs> just because like I knew like I because if like I was basically the commentator for your matches like almost every single time, if not every single time for the league. So like I I know like firsthand like how that like how that my Lopsic could kind of like stall out people and like help set up for others, and then. I, when I saw that you brought not just like and rock but also Volcarona, I was like, okay, great, two sweepers I have to take out like <laughs> immediately. Um, so that's why I was trying to conserve uh, Chandelure and Dragonite. I wanted to also show you how like, oh, you know, like you've been helping me with this match. So I also wanted to show you how far I've come, and I was trying as hard as I can. Like, I mean, I tried as hard as I can with every match, um, but yeah, like this was this was obviously really a tough one. Like, I was dreading this just like this as much, if not more so than the noob scrub match um so it was just really intimidating and i believe there was a point in the match where like um bait uh my toxic croak like i kept using gunk shot because i'm like oh man gunk shot is such a powerful move it has like 120 power and then i forgot about its accuracy which is like 85 or something or 80 mm -hmm. so like i just kept missing i think i used it twice um i think it was on serena i believe and it just wouldn't, it just wouldn't connect. So, I figured that was kind of like, like the balancing of like the good <laughs> luck I had the week, the week previously with Noob Scrubs. It's like okay, now this week I have to have bad luck. Um, so there was that, and like, you know, I think it was like kind of like towards like the middle, towards the end of the match or whatever. We we're kind of stalling between Sylvia and Mylotic for a while, just kind of healing our people or healing ourselves and everything. But I realized that once I lost. Um, Himbo, uh, sorry, Himbofication, the Dragonite. Um, I figured I was gonna most likely lose, but then once Quagsire was gone, that's when I actually, like, I'm like, just lost confidence. I'm like, okay, man, I have no idea what to do from here. Um, I figured, like, that was it. Like, that was the game. I, I tried. I did whatever I could, but, like, I think by that point you had Volcarona already. Uh, so, yeah, that's why I wanted Quagsire to counter, uh, Volcarona's, oh, stat boost, but then I forgot, wait, Volcarona... Um, it has access to Energy Ball. <laughs> Giga Drain. <laughs> oh, Giga Drain, sorry. Yeah. Like, one of those major... Honestly, you don't even need, uh, like, a significant grass move. I feel like fucking... Like, sorry, I didn't mean to curse. I don't want to, uh, get you banned from YouTube or anything, but... Um, <laughs> I feel like any kind of, like, grass move could have, like, just knocked over Quackstar. Like, I don't know. I don't know what the weakest grass move is. I was going to say Razor Leaf is <laughs> actually pretty good. Well, um, I think... I think I needed Giga Drain. I, I don't think anything weaker would have done it. Depending on the investment, but but yeah, you did put up a good fight. I I think yeah, the Giga Drain on the Quagsire was the turning point because it kind of established like Volcarona's dominance mm -hmm. and was basically like okay, yeah, Volcarona could sweep now because once Dragonite and Chandelure are gone, like nothing could really take hits right. from boosted Volcarona. Um, oh wait, before we move on, I'm, I'm not sure if we're about to move on right now, but like I don't know if you want to like reveal like the agreement we had for this match or not. Oh yeah, I already told everybody. Like we we had an agreement. Uh, like um, yeah, like you were basically. nervous about Mew, and I caught on to that. And I was ner nervous about Mega Gyarados, so I was like, okay, I'll not use Mew, and you won't use Mega Gyarados. And then we were like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> and then as we were team building, you were like, fuck, I should have like used Mega Gyarados, and I was like, oh, I should have used Mew. <laughs> but so we yeah. decided in playoffs, like yeah, no, we we're gonna use the Pokemon that we agreed not to use. But, yeah, um, exactly. Like, I feel like if I if I replaced Dragonite with Mega Gyarados, that would have really helped a bit, at least. Or if I replaced Quagsire with Mega Gyarados, I don't know. Yeah, um, same here. With I really wanted Mew because it had a lot of things that could have taken down some of the problem Pokemon. Because yeah, like that was the thing. Like by this point in time, I kind of got into a groove of like, okay, I have a general understanding of how to prepare my teams, how to anticipate my opponents' teams and their move sets. Um, and then when it came to Mew, I was like, man, there's just so much you could do. And I believe I helped somebody else by that point train um, against you. I forget if it was Colin or um, Noob Scrubbers, somebody. But I helped somebody train that week, and I ran Nasty Plot Mew against them. Um, <laughs> and let me just tell you, like, I know your favorite MVP, um, sorry, your favorite Pokemon was Volcarona, but, like, for me, it was like, whoa, like, this, like, this like little rinky dinky pink cutie um, is just a sheer terror. Like with the <laughs> that nasty plot and that special attack yeah, uh, investment. So that was that was really fun, and that was that was also kind of the reason why I wanted Mew originally. But I'm like, eh, 
Like, I think it did pretty good without it, all things considered. Yeah. Yeah, Mew is really intense. And you you did do really well in this match. It, it was very hard for me to find an opening, and I thought I was losing at first, so... Definitely a good one for you. Um, yeah, also, like, one last note. I mean, this is kind of more like, a, I guess, an inside choke or whatever, but, like, our little truce at the beginning reminds me of, like, your play style during coup, where, like, you'd like to enter these little, like, agreements with people. It's like, okay, I want to attack you. You want to attack me. So let's gang up on this person or that person by default. And then once everybody else is gone, then we can see each other. So like, it kind of felt that way, which is... that Honestly, that little truce or whatever, like, it kind of helps further motivate me to try to get as far as I could in the playoffs just so I can have the chance to fight you again in, in the official capacity <laughs> to see how much damage I could do with Mega Gyarados. Of course, now I'm out, and you're still, I think, waiting on the final match right yeah, now. Yeah. Maybe afterwards we can finally have that friendly match and then see, like... Or yeah, it up. everyone, everyone wants to have a rematch with me. <laughs> <laughs> You're like the seventh person to ask, um, but yeah, um, oh, definitely. Sure. Um, so next we go on to Canopy Defenders. Um, this was just a win by default because unfortunately mm -hmm. Edgar was not able to uh, attend the battle at the scheduled time, um, even after a reschedule. So. There's not really much to say yeah. here. The only thing I have to say was that this would have been the match I would have debuted while Rain, um, Bernie Sanders, for the first time. I, I don't remember what my strategy was because it was so long ago, but I just want to have that on the record. I would have I would have chosen Bernie Sanders here. <laughs> well, we'll see we'll see Bernie Sanders and Wall Rain in a later match. So um, next is Grand Island Jolteons, and this was pretty much. Um, very fast. <laughs> yeah. I think this was, like, my fastest match of the entire league, like, including the playoffs. <laughs> well, especially the playoffs, like, once we get to yeah. there. <laughs> um, but this is also, like, my first 6-0, like, ever, like, in a friendly capacity or an official capacity, um, period. Um, so I thought that was, like, it was just kind of, like, really special for me, I guess. Like, here I am. Um, you know, like, this is, like, my first journey and all that, and I was able to get to that point. And um, all you had to do was click Leaf Storm. <laughs> and that's the thing, though. So that's why it's like, I don't want to, like, toot my horn too much, because it's also, like, it's it was a pretty straightforward kind of match. Like, I don't think Quasimodo had anything that could have countered Superior once w once the first Leaf Storm went off. Yeah. Um, so I think that was a little bit of luck also on my side. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that just shows to... That just goes to show you... Oh, that's also why I called Superior Perfuma, because that's also, like, a... Reference to another Netflix show, um, Shira and the Princesses of Power. One of the princesses is called Perfuma, and she has like power over like plants, and like she comes off as like this really like hippy dippy, like peace loving, empathic person or whatever. And she she definitely is the entire time, but like when she gets into that whole like I need to defend my people, I need to defend myself, or whatever, she gets like really like she surprises you with how much power she actually has. Um, so. I felt like it was kind of fitting for Superior, especially with, like, this match in particular. Just, like, <laughs> literally clicking Leaf Storm until I won. I think I also ran Hidden Power Ice or Fire um, in this matchup. I forget which one. I think Fire. Yeah, because um, it was super effective against Lucario. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this was a strong showing for you, and Quasimodo's second time falling to a contrary grass Pokemon. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so moving forward, we're versus Dutch Inkes now, and this was uh, a big win for Dutch Inkes. And I think mm -hmm. in this match, your strongest enemy was Amoongus. Yes, it was just able By to far. switch into anything, um, and I think and cause a Pokemon to fall asleep as well. So I think that was um, intense for you. Yeah, definitely. And just also one thing I wanted to mention in this match is just like it's kind of funny how like the week prior I had like the sweep, like the six zero, and this time around it was like reverse. I have like the zero six, um, so that was like a first for a while too. And especially because of that Amoongus, like that was just an absolute nightmare. And like yeah. my only counter to that was uh, Chandelure, and like I think either got sp I think it got spored or something, but it got taken up pretty early on, and I wasn't able to like adequately use it. Um, and then I kept I kept forgetting uh, this time around that like 
Like in weeks prior, I was really good at like kind of like switching and then counter switching and like anticipating switch ins. Um, so I'd have like proper moves to anticipate all that. And with Chandelure, I kept sending it out to like, okay, I can finally take out Amoongus now. And then I kept forgetting, oh wait, my opponent can just switch out Pokemon too. This isn't like a gym leader or something. <laughs> um, so I think that was also to my detriment um, as well. But regardless of that fact, Quest is just really, really that good. I think also like on capitalizing um, how their Pokemon like function together as well. Like this is like I think this was again like one of like the big three I guess like of like the first ten weeks that I was like dreading facing, <laughs> um, just because of like like cause I think at this point I didn't quite understand exactly how terrifying Amoongus was other than like looking at his move sets and like stats um, and abilities so, like I had a theoretical understanding but then actually facing it like live action or <laughs> what am I saying like it's a movie but like it, you know like in the league it was just like yeah. oh my god there's how do I get past this like at all like th there was pretty much nothing I could I could think of yeah. um, but I mean I did reflect hard on this match or whatever um, as you'll see I guess like later off in my performance um, in the playoffs like I did try to think how to about how to get around that Moongus but yeah. we'll get to that later um all right, so next match. This is the last match of the regular 10 weeks versus Downtown Darmanitan. And this was a very close one. It was a one, a minus one, plus one situation. And it all came down to Chandelure. Well, even if Chandelure wasn't scarfed or was scarfed, like, Sharpedo still was able to use Protect if, if that was the case. Yeah. But. Yeah, we discussed that in the chat. It was very um, close. Yeah, it was extremely close. Like if the if that Sharpedo didn't have protect and if I if I chose if I probably anticipated and used the energy ball, it might have gone the other way, but that's a lot of ifs. Um so yeah, it was But it really did close. have protect. Um Yeah, that's the thing, like so, in, yeah. like that whole possible scenario only works if uh Tiller didn't pack protect. And I believe I have in my notes, like, I had, like, two or three people helping me other than you, and I think it was... I don't... I think I reached out to Tiller once, and, like, either, like, we couldn't work on a practice match, or we did work, and then I'm mixing people up right now, so I'm, I apologize <laughs> if that's the case. But I was still kind of like, ooh, like, I don't know how I feel about this. Um, just because of that Zygarde. Like, I think I faced a Zygarde earlier in the match up too. I think it was Kuro's Zygarde, because there was, like, two of them. Like, the two forms. I, for I forget who else had his another Zygarde, but like Zygarde ten percent was like very intimidating as well uh, for this matchup. And Mandibuzz, like it was really just I don't know, I forgot exactly how I took on Mandibuzz, but I remember that was kind of like dread. Like I was really scared of uh, yeah. that just because it kept roosting and it Good was just really hard Vicky to get around. The Mandibuzz. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, this is a good match and. Um, Despite losing this match, you still did manage to get into the playoffs, which we'll discuss a little bit later. Um, but we're going to just look at the Pokemon right now and their okay. differentials and usage. Superior uh, having the highest differential after that clean sweep. Um, what was your favorite Pokemon to use out of your Pokemon, and which one were you like, meh, I don't like using it that much? <laughs> Let's see. I think my favorite usage was... It's honestly trans rights, uh, Sylveon. Like I know Sylveon doesn't have really many kills here, um, at all. But like that's the thing; it wasn't really the point. Yeah. Like the whole point of it was to like one, like Sylveon is kind of like a, like almost like one of my all-time faves. Like Whooper takes that spot, like kind of obviously, but Sylveon is kind of like right up there. Um, I just think it's like such a cute Pokemon. It's like the first eight limb, eight limbed uh, EV. Um, which I know that, that kind of creeps people out, but I, I I love that extra factor actually, and it's just the aesthetic, just the, this the concept. Like imagine you're watching this like Pokemon match, like on like either like live action or like the anime or something, and then you see this like giant like a dragon or whatever. Like it's powered up, it's boosted, it's like really menacing, and you send this cute little fluffy little uh, Sylveon or whatever, and it takes like a fuck like a, a Draco meteor, and like nothing happens. It just doesn't even phase it. And then just screams, and then it dies. Like just, just the, just the, <laughs> this picturing it um, was just really funny to me. Um, but of course, of course, a close second 
would actually be uh, Dragonite or Mega Gyarados, actually. Just because like I liked like the concept of like okay, I need to figure out like when's the best way to set this Pokemon up, and now once it's set up, it can sweep. Superior, I mean, functions very similarly. That actually is like the Pokemon with the highest differential here. But the thing is like, like with my sweep earlier with um, sorry, I have it written down here. Uh, Quasimodo. Quasimodo. Sorry, um, with my first sweep of Quasimodo with Superior, like that was fun. That was cool. But or let me let me rephrase. That was like really cool for me I guess in terms of like oh this is my first week ever but it was also like I literally just pressed A to win like I just pressed A like, <laughs> like... wow so superior is a sortie huh <laughs> well that's the thing so actually <laughs> when I when I selected superior so the, the strategy that I had during the game was actually coil leaf blade aqua tail and something else I think it's maybe synthesis so that's what I played uh, with black and white and black and white too that was like my move set so I was, ex I was expecting to bring in Superior for the same route. Like, oh, like let me just boost up. Maybe I'll bring in Substitute, and then I'll just keep Leaf Blading and Critical Hitting, keep one, then that's how I'll win. Um, so that's actually the strategy I expected to use it, uh, until I started seeing, oh, wait, Contrary, that, that's, like, this is like, a good idea. Let's, let's go with that. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, I know you asked for one favorite. I kind of gave you three, but, you know. That's why it's tier one, so... <laughs> um... <laughs> Lots of Pokemon that you didn't use that you traded away, which makes sense because you wanted to improve your team. Um, and then Pachirisu you didn't use, but we will see you use it very soon in the upcoming matches of the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And you, I think, actually had the most 100% rates out of anybody in the league, having three. I think the next person had two. You always brought Sylveon, Metagross, and Chandelure with you. Oh yeah, that was the thing. So, like, I noticed, like, gradually, like... Um, that kind of core kind of kept like popping up. Like, I, I at first initially it was gonna be like Me Metagross, Sylveon, and then like Dragonite. Like that was my intended one until I brought Mega Gyarados. Then like I would sometimes switch them out. But yeah, like Chandelure, um, Sylveon, and Metagross. Like I feel like I, I don't know. They they always kind of seem to pull through. I mean, other than other, you know, other than the times like I obviously lost. Um, but I I couldn't res one I couldn't resist bringing out Metagross. Sorry, Metagross, just because of the whole like the shiny version kind of looks like the character, the Star Wars character of General Grievous. But also, like I think I told you, like my main strategy was stall and like like at least coming in or whatever. So like um, I still wanted to have stall proc even if my strategy for that specific match wasn't stall, just because I figured you know I can still I can still benefit from like chip damage. It's fine. It's fine. Let's let's just put it in there for like you know for fun. Um, and then obviously I needed a cleric, so like Sylvan was like, like my go-to, like absolutely. I, I I don't think I I could have gone this far without Sylvan, honestly. Yeah, Sylvan was definitely it carried through for you a lot. Um, so let's see. Now that we went over the Pokemon a little bit, let's see the quarterfinals so we take a look at the bracket and on your side you were versus quest requested and if you won that you would have gone against appleton allegiance both mm -hmm. teams that you actually lost against in the uh regular season so it was going to be pretty tough especially versus yeah. quest i think that was your worst case scenario and that's who you got um it certainly was <laughs> and so at first you faced quest and it kind of played the same way as it did in the regular season where it was a 6-0, and one of the biggest things standing in your way was Amoongus. Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't know if you have anything to say about this match. It's kind of like the last match. Like, I don't think there's really that much else to say, in my opinion. Um, yeah, I mean, all I could really say was just, like, I was still kind of nervous from, like, the last matchup. Like, I was like, oh, man. Like, this is, like, like you said, it was kind of, like, my worst-case scenario. Having to face this person so soon. Um, after, like, losing to a 6 0, and then also, like, with, like, there was just, like, a lot of, like, I guess, like, life changes going on in the, in the final weeks of this tournament for me. <laughs> like, moving from Orlando to Miami and some other stuff or whatever. So, like, there was that kind of going on in the background. So, like, I, I kind of felt like my heart wasn't as into it for the last couple weeks, but I still tried as hard as I could despite that. Um, because so, I don't want to say, like, I lost motivation or anything, but it was just, you know, like, it was hard to properly focus. Um, 
but all that aside, I still wanted to demonstrate that, like, I learned and I'm gonna apply what I learned as, like, best as I can. Like, um, and this, I will, I will say this before we move on to the next matchup, that this was actually, like, the first time ever that I decided to set up all 12 of my Pokémon. Um, with specific movesets and natures and like specific strategies to like work together so I could like swap them out like if needed um, and I actually did need to <laughs> swap them out um, for this matchup so yeah like I don't know I, I never felt more prepared actually <laughs> despite feeling so nervous and kind of like worn out from like life changes like I never felt more prepared actually um, in comparison to the entire uh, tournament altogether well, that preparedness, I think, showed, and something clicked in this next match, because in this next match, you actually won by a pretty large margin, too, by plus four, versus someone who you had previous lost 6-0, uh, 6 I mean, twice. Mm -hmm. So what changed in this match? So, I think one of the biggest things that was, like, a good change for me was the inclusion of Pachirisu <laughs> um, and the actual usage of it because I think I used Pachirisu once before and it just didn't work out um, or just never it never played but this time around I figured okay because um, what I, like I said before I, I had movesets for every single one of my Pokemon and like the, the whole point of Pachirisu was to annoy annoy the like annoy the shit out of Quest basically <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you'll pardon my language. So that's also why I called Pachirisu Nagito Komaeda, because I, I don't want to spoil anything if anybody hasn't played Danganronpa 2 yet, but there is a character in Nagito, and he does some stuff, let's just say. <laughs> <laughs> well, even, so, e even more than Pachirisu, I think Skuntank was really And I was, gonna, I was just going to get to Skuntank yeah. as well, but what I wanted to bring up Pachirisu is that I kind of got, I kind of expected to basically nuzzle as many Pokemon as I could, and then take a spore from Amoongus, and then that's actually what ended up happening. Because I figured, you know, Pachirisu wasn't really good for much else, honestly, because it didn't have the viability to Super Fang or do anything else, really. So I figured, okay, it's, it doesn't matter if it's asleep, because I don't really need it to be awake. Um, and then once I'm asleep, the sleep pause going to, goes into effect, so it's kind of like, oh, okay, he's out for now. And then that allowed Skuntank, for example, to switch in on Amoongus every time I tried to Toxic another Pokemon instead, which would have been hurt uh, very badly by that. So the two of them kind of like working together kind of basically walled Amoongus in terms of like what it can do to like, you know, like harass teams. Um, and I know the score doesn't show up, but Superior with Glare, I believe also. Um, this match and the next one kind of like pulled through in terms of like just distributing paralysis around Yeah. in addition to Pachirisu. Yeah, the paralysis really helped. Um... And then you cleared the way for Mega Gyarados at the end to break through the very long stall that was happening. <laughs> yeah, so that that's another thing I have my notes here. Like, I just want to say, like, I apologize. I, I still haven't actually watched that video just no, yet. No, you don't have to apologize. No, but honestly, like, it was kind of... Like, I, like this is another one of those matches where I got into, like, a, kind of like that hyper-focused state that, like, people have kind of, like, ADHD experience or... I mean, you don't have to have ADHD, I, I don't think, to, like, experience hyper -focus, but, like... It's like a specific symptom, but anyway, so I was in that specific zone, and like I was like, like I was already kind of like planning all my moves up in advance. I knew exactly what to do for certain situations, or at least I thought I did, or I tried to. Um, and yeah, so uh, there were there was kind of that double edged sort of that with that hyper focus, where it was like I was really focused on like, okay, let me switch these Pokemon in to anticipate this attack and this attack and this attack. But this happens in the chat, and I know this happened live too, because I think I heard you laugh at this point or something, or, I, or, or it was in the chat, but at one point I sent out Superior against uh, Zumaril, and then I immediately switched them out. So that made everybody in the chat think, oh, I anticipated Sap Sipper, and that's why I wasn't putting uh, <laughs> Superior out. But I do want to like go on the record and explain my thought process <laughs> um, really quickly. It, it, it wasn't that... Um, I knew it had Sap Zipper. I actually had no idea, or I forgot at that point. What I wanted to do specifically to safely set up for Superior was I wanted to I wanted to get rid of Amoongus, because Amoongus really messed me up um, last time with Superior with, the, with that Toxic. But then also, I wanted to specifically set up on Rhydon, because I figured Rhydon would be an easier target. 
Um, and then I ended up killing right on really early. So I was like, oh man, like the person I wanted to set up is gone. So let me just set up on a zoomer, like whatever. Like it's a water type. It, it might tank my hit, but you know, it'll at least do some damage I can set up properly. And then that's when Sass Sticker went into effect. I'm like, oh my god, no, this is not what I wanted. So I switched it out. Then then I think people thought I was trying to drag it, the match out even longer because of that. And I, well, I just want to say that was not the case. I just literally forgot what a zoomer could do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was really funny. I don't think people thought you were trying to drag out the match. We were just like, wait, we thought you knew that it had Sav Zipper. I guess you didn't. Um, no, yeah. But yeah, that was really funny. Um, yeah, so that match was really good for you. And then the second match, um, Quest did change up a little bit and went a little bit more on the offensive, I think. Especially with Durant. Oh, you mean the third match? Yes. Okay, yeah, sorry, you said second. Let me move up to that. And yeah, like, they went went more offensive, and then I was trying to do, like, a blend of, like, my first team and my last team. Um, so I think this time around, like, I wanted to make sure that Skuntank and Pashirisu were there, because I liked the synergy that they had last time around. Um, and then I wanted to debut Bernie Sanders again, or I, I say again because I didn't get to debut him last time. Um, just ca just in case this was my last match, so it's a little bit of a sentimental reason why I brought Walrein, which, not to say that it didn't pull its weight, because it did. I believe um, the ice beams it was dishing out was doing a lot of damage. I think it actually, it didn't take out Hydreigon, obviously, but like I think it brought it down to like a really low point at one point or another. Um, so, I will say that Walrein was, I think, a good choice overall, but I did not effectively use it, for sure. Yeah, I do think Walrein was a good choice. Um, Skuntank still a good choice. Uh, this was this was a def definitely a closer match for you. It wasn't a 6-0 loss. So I think mm -hmm. you did come a long way in learning how to play versus quest and counter teams. And the set, the mm -hmm. set format was pretty decent for you, I think. Um, so yeah. that was the loss of the quarterfinals with a 2-1 for Quest and then a 1-2 for you but mm -hmm. and I put a dollar sign by mistake on the win <laughs> um, <laughs> when they cash money uh, but you you overall did really well in the league and I think that you've definitely grown a lot what do you think you've changed in your perspective by being in this league let's see so I mean one of the bigger things I think honestly was just like kind of increased confidence in myself um and like my like yeah like confidence in my abilities cause like and I'm sure you remember also like earlier earlier on I was always asking you for questions like oh my god like what do you think about this what do you think about this what do you think about this how do you do this how do you do that um and not just you but um a few others as well I believe it was I, I, I keep mixing up everybody's names who was helping me so I'm sorry I believe it was Noobscript, Colin, Till, and Tiller. Um, I need to double check the chats. Um, but like, thank you to everybody who was, who, has, who listened to all my questions and like helped me with the practice matches and everything. Um, but over time, they made me realize like, okay, like the questions I'm asking are valid, and also like having faith in my ability to continue forward, even when I have those like big mistakes from like the from like I guess like ADHD moments or like just general like not preparing properly um just like the whole like don't give up kind of a thing that really helped out um, as I progressed in the in the league and I feel like you know just it's easier to maintain that mentality when you have that confidence to begin with um yeah. so I feel like that really helped another thing was that <sighs> there was one time where I choiced yeah, I think it was. I think it was my last match actually in week ten. Um, I think that was like the one time I choiced uh, Shandor, um, and it, it did work to my benefit. I think I still, yeah, I still lost that match, but I, you have more of experience than like the rest of the viewers, I guess. So I'll just like, tell you guys like right now, I absolutely hate every single choice item because I do not like <laughs> to be limited in any way, shape, or form. Like, no, you don't get to do that. The most you can limit me on is Assault Vest. Like, that I will, uh, I'll accept that. Because, okay, like, I'm limited to attacking moves, that's fine. I'd like that because I have, you know, an Assault Vest. That makes sense. 
but any choice item I just absolutely detest because like I don't want to be limited. I'm like I want to I want to shoot a flamethrower and then switch to energy ball, or will o' wisp or overheat or whatever. <laughs> um, so that was like one thing I think I opened up a little bit too because like I still I still hate those items. Not gonna lie, but I can see their viability a little bit more. Yeah. Um. Than I than I yeah than I did previously. Um. And. Also, like, I get, like, I don't want to say, like, reliance on smoke on or whatever, but, like, it helped me understand why, I guess, the meta is the way it is, and, like, why smoke on will recommend certain movesets over others. Because, like, over the years, I, um, the way I actually discovered, like, smoke on, um, and Serebi and all that was actually, like, when I was with my ex, like, like years and years and years ago, we used to do, like, friendly Pokemon matches with each other. Um, and then that's when I was like, hmm, I, I would like some help with this, forever because I didn't, I, at that point in time, I, I didn't play for a couple of years. I, I skipped almost all of, yeah, I skipped all of Gen 4, um, and then Gen 5 was coming out that year, so I was like, oh, like, let me get back into this. And then my ex gave me a copy of, like, Diamond, um, after, no, sorry, I, I, my ex gave me a copy of Heart Golds or whatever, so I played that, and then I played Diamond or whatever. I, I, it's really fuzzy, I don't really remember too much. Um, but, like, during that time period, I was, like, really not confident with my abilities. It's like, oh man, it's been years since I played. So I would find these websites, and I would see, like, oh, like, on Serebii, they have the whole, like, Pokemon of the Day or Pokemon of the Week or something, <laughs> and then they would, like, feature that Pokemon and, like, have a cute little, like, bio about it, and then give, like, recommended movesets. Um, and then obviously I found Smoke on and Pokemon database after that as well, and like they would recommend all these like, moves. And I'm like, man, this makes no sense. Like, why would you, why would you carry Rapid Spin? That's such a weak move. Like, who <laughs> needs that? <laughs> like things like that. Um, but I would still like, you know, like reckon, like I would read up on some of these strategies. That's how I learned some of the lingo. Um, and then like I would at least I would I, I would like adapt that stuff like to my own like effect against like <laughs> my ex for like friendlies like it's it's not so like silly or whatever because i was like trying so hard um for like uh nothing or whatever but like i didn't really quite understand the meta in that sense because it was just like oh we're just doing friendlies um but like i would really like piss him off or whatever because like i would have pokemon that I would have like light screen and reflect and like that's when i realized like okay so my strategy is stall because i i liked my dual screens i like leech seed i like toxic i liked all that stuff um, I didn't use Stealth Rock back then because I didn't know how to get it uh, for Gen 4, but yeah, like, so like going, going from those like weird like, oh let me try these like little rinky dinky strategies going on to like here, um, and like seeing how those like metas apply, not just like in that objective sense of like, oh this Pokemon does this role better, um, but also like how you react to different people's styles. Um, like, I think, bef like, before I actually we did this interview, I actually listened to Fingered Witches, um, interview with you, uh, sorry, Team but Butcher Blissies, and, like, how they're so, like, in the opposite direction, because, like, it seems like they're very anti-meta, and they try to go against the grain, and, like, sometimes that can, that can, like, trip their opponents up, um, so, like, I think that's, like, I guess, like, the final thing I really come to, like, appreciate, just, like, everybody has, like, their own different approach, um, to like you know the competitive side of Pokemon, and I think it's all it's all really cool. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, and the cool thing about Draft League is that it can be anti-meta in its own right, so it has tastes of meta and anti-meta, which I really like. Um, and speaking of Draft Leagues, I do hope that this first one that you joined was a good experience. I think it was for you, and. Mm -hmm. um, moving forward hopefully you'll be interested in future draft leagues that we have and um and you get to hone some of your abilities and drafting skills and battling skills even more no definitely like i'm actually looking forward to potentially the next one because i mean i'm you already know this or whatever but i'm about to like take up like a trucking job so, like, I'm going to do some training for, like, almost a month, and then I'm going to be on the road for about a year, um, other than, like, a few days out of the week um, for, like, rest days and days off. So, I don't know if I'll be able to participate in the next league, but I would certainly like to, like, once I get an understanding of my job and how, like, it dem its demands work. Um, so, hopefully I'll see you guys soon. <laughs> Um, with that matchup, I'm actually really excited to like take all this knowledge that I've learned from it and actually apply it. Because 
I don't know if we, if we covered this at the beginning, but I was actually filling in for somebody else's seed or slot. Oh or yeah, we didn't cover this. Yeah, so like the thing is like I think I started at seed five or six or something, and like I actually didn't deserve that because I was covering somebody at the last minute um, before the the drafting actually started. So I thank whoever my predecessor was for giving me like the starting role because what ended up happening was that 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 forced me to match up with like a lot of heavy like heavy hitters like really tough people from the beginning i think um so thanks for that i guess <laughs> um and oh look, just one last thing about like what i've learned about pokemon i'm gonna say this right now i know this sounds kind of dumb but like <laughs> um, one of the things i learned the most of was just literally like gen 7 and 8 pokemon and like their existence and like what they can do because like um or sorry, Gen 6 and 7? Yeah, or 7 or so. Whatever Sun and Moon is, because I never actually finished that game. Um, and then with Pokemon X and Y, I didn't really get into the Mega Pokemon, so like, I, like, that in of itself was like a lot to learn, actually. Like, like what Z-Crystals are, like, which Pokemon can Mega Evolve and what abilities they get. It was, like, <laughs> like, it gave me a lot of, like, things to, like, reflect on, and then... Also for the future, like I don't know if you guys ever plan to do like Gen Eight and forward or whatever, like as mm. the franchise progresses. <laughs> I can already hear that. Um, but if so, like maybe they'll expose me to more Pokemon. Of course, I mean you already know my opinion on that. I'm kind of just waiting for the possibility that they might add the rest of the Pokemon back to the roster, just because I mean I've been here from the beginning and like I don't like the idea of like you know like. <laughs> Like, I don't like Trubbish, I don't like Gulpin, but what if that's somebody's favorite Pokemon and now they're like, they're like banned from like, from Pokemon Britain or whatever. I don't know. Um, it's fine if you guys play it too. I, I don't really care one or the other in that respect, but just for me personally, it's like, oh, like, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want anybody to be left out. But anyway. Well, <laughs> sorry, I'm getting so like, it, it's pretty late for me right now, but um, yeah. It's it's definitely been a pleasure seeing you grow in this league and have fun. So hopefully you do get to join the next one, and um, it will be coming up pretty soon. Um, but yeah, Lion Hugs from Wooper Blooper. Very fun having you in the league, and I'm really glad you made it to the playoffs. And and yeah, <laughs> thanks. It's been a pleasure, and I'm looking forward to the next uh, league event and all that. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, I was gonna end with something clever, but honestly, I'm so tired right now. Yeah, no, um, it's, it's all right. But this was uh, team analysis of Team Whooper Blooper by Lion Hugs. Um, please do watch more of the team analysis videos coming soon. This is the second of the playoff uh, videos, so we still have four more playoff. Uh, folks who are going to be doing team analysis videos and I'm excited to do those. So stay tuned for those and I'll see you then. Until then, I hope everybody has good rest of the day or night and this is Noel from Mystical Chain. Don't Ta -ta. forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> oh my gosh. Alright, see ya. Bye bye.